Sup guys, I'm Kel, Red Zone MTG, and today I have another Oathbreaker deck strategy video. As you already can see by the thumbnail, the title of the video, and the picture that you're seeing on screen right now, we are doing an Ashiok deck video. This Ashiok deck, as you can see here, was actually one of the first decks that I really wanted to make after learning about Oathbreaker. It's basically a control mill deck with some combo wins. It is not the fastest deck, but it is a lot of fun to play. Also, keep in mind that this is not a budget build. This is actually my personal deck. And without further ado, let's start talking about it, starting with Ashiok Nightmare Weaver and our signature spell, Glimpse the Unthinkable. So Ashiok is a three drop Planeswalker, which I think is really good in this format. It lets you be able to play your Planeswalker and then save mana for, you know, counter magic or possibly your signature spell here to play in the same turn. Um, he or she, we actually don't know their gender, um, costs one of any, a blue and a black. It's a Planeswalker. Ashiok comes into play with three loyalty. Uh, the plus one is exile the top three cards of target opponent's library. The minus X is you get to put a creature card with converted mana cost X exiled with Ashiok uh, onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is a nightmare in addition to its other types. Basically, the flavor is my, uh, Ashiok is stealing your dreams, or rather, um, causing nightmares. And stealing them or taking your dreams, turning them into nightmares, something like that. It's really sweet. Um, synergizes really well with a lot of mill stuff we have going on and also helps protect us uh, by reanimating pretty good stuff. There is also a minus 10 here, which we almost never see, but it does say exile all cards from all opponents' hands and graveyards. Pretty good, but, you know, we're not really going to get to 10 here. And then our signature spell is Glimpse the Unthinkable. This is a classic classic kitchen table mill card and you know just a pretty good mill card in general um, for a blue and a black sorcery target player puts the top 10 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard you know and milling 10 out of you know the 58 in their deck well, it would be less than 58 it would be at least you know 51 assuming they drew a seven card hand you know milling 10 cards out of that is going to be a pretty good deal, especially only for two mana. Being able to play it a second time for four mana is still pretty good. With everything else we have going on in the deck, Glimpse is an efficient and pretty hefty mill card. Before we start talking about the really spicy stuff in the deck, let's start talking about some of the nuts and bolts. Here we have a big old stack of cantrips and card advantage cards. We've got Ponder, we've got Preordain, we've got your Serum Visions, and we've got your Brainstorm. This is the, you know... Quinfecta, the, the quartet of the really good one drop uh, draw spells. We want to keep our mana base pretty lean so we can do multiple things per turn, you know, like playing Aserum Visions and holding mana up for counter spells because, you know, we are running some counter spells. We also run Ancestral Vision. This one is, you know, I just really like this card. You can run it if you got it. Otherwise, you can put a bunch of other different stuff here. You can play like Opt or whatever, but I like the Vision, especially just being able to draw three cards. Um, you know, kind of, you kind of put the, you, you put it on layaway, you put your vision on layaway. Um, I know some people don't like this because when they play it, people will try to mess with it and counter it and whatnot, but we are running a lot of counter spells and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to counter their counters. Um, I also am running Baleful Strix, just a 1-1 one, one flyer for 2 with Death Touch and when it enters, you get a draw a card, which is awesome. Just a really, really good, efficient card, you know, blocks everything on the board almost and replaces itself. Um, also we're running Dark Confidant. If you have Dark Confidant, you should definitely run it in this deck. We have a pretty lean mana base, like I said. Or not mana base, we have a pretty lean curve, like I said. And so hopefully he doesn't hit us for too hard. And then finally we have Windfall. This card is actually really good in a mill deck because um, each player you know, will discard their hand and then they draw cards equal to the greatest number of cards any player discarded this way. So you can end up milling people for a lot. You know, it's not putting it into the graveyard or exiling it, but they're still drawing the cards. So Windfall, I think, is pretty good in the deck. And it actually combos quite well with some of our, like, recurring mill cards. In fact, Windfall, as well as stuff like Ancestral Visions and Brainstorm work really well with a couple of our recurring mill cards. I also run Demonic Tutor because it's Demonic Tutor. We are playing a couple combos in this deck, and Demonic Tutor just lets us search for anything. If you don't know what it does, because you know this is in Japanese, it is a sorcery for one of any, one black, and it lets you search your library for any card and put it into your hand and then you shuffle your library. Just a, an amazing card for any deck and any format. Demonic Tutor is fantastic. 
Next up, we have our counter spells with this big ol' fat stack of counters here. We're gonna go over these pretty quickly. I'll stop on a couple that you might not know what they do or how useful they are. Flusterstorm is a really good one versus other control decks as it, you know, it has Storm here, so the more cards they play in a turn, the more cards you play in a turn, you can counter, counter multiple things, it helps you win counter wars, it helps you counter, you know, obviously Storm strategies. Um, just a fantastic card and only one mana, pretty good. Similarly, we're running Force Spike. You I mean, if you don't know what it is, just one mana, it's an instant uh, target. Spell is countered unless it's Caster Pays an additional one. And like I said, um, I like to run pretty lean decks and the people I play with also like to run pretty lean decks. Everyone has kind of a legacy mindset, so cards like this are actually pretty good in the, form, uh, the groups that I play. Uh, Spell Pierce, similar thing, just counters non-creature spells. Can counter Planeswalkers, which is actually really, really sweet, keep that in mind. I'm also running a Miserly Stifle. This card is hilarious. It is a one-drop instant counter target activated or triggered ability. You want to know what we can counter with this? We can counter, you know, Planeswalker abilities like Ultimates or Fetch Lands. Stifle is a hilarious card. Next up, I have Classic Remand. You know, Counterspell, return to their hand and you get a draw card. Really, really good tempo card. Um, just can help you in a lot of situations and it lets you, you know, it, you know, it replaces itself. Arcane Denial, similar deal. Counter any spell and then that, you know, the person gets to draw two cards and you get to draw an additional card. Just really solid and we don't really care that much if they're drawing additional cards, especially since we're running so many counters and it's a multiplayer format and it kind of helps mill them a little bit. You know, pretty good. Next, I have Mana Leak. This is just a classic two mana counter spell unless it's controlled with pace three. Um, pretty good for the same reasons that four spike can be pretty good. Uh, Memory Lapse is particularly good in this deck. Uh, what it does is you counter a spell and then it goes on top of the, uh, the library instead of the graveyard. So then you can actually mill that card. And if it's a creature, you can mill it with Ashiok and then get it back, which is super sweet. I really, really like Memory Lapse in this deck. Next up, we have just straight up counter spell with my uh, Tilt-worthy Bubbles counter spell from Mercadian Masks. I love this art. It's not the best art, but it's one of the most tilting arts, uh, which, which you know, it, you, gotta, you gotta get that tilt factor. Uh, next is Supreme Will, one of my favorite new cards. And I use new loosely because this was, you know, 2017, but I really like this card a lot. It's really versatile. Um, it's a three drop, two of any, one blue. Counter target spell unless it's controller pays three. So it's kind of like a mana leak that costs an additional, you know, additional mana, which is fine. But it also says you can look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom. So this is a counter spell if you need it, or it's a card selection ability if you need it. Just really, really good, really solid. I like it a lot. Next we have Glen Alendra Archmage, one of our ways to repeatedly counter spells. This is a 2-2 Fairy Wizard for three of any and a blue. Flying, you can pay a blue and sack it, and counter target non-creature spell, you know, like Planeswalkers. And it also has Persist, so you can do it again. This card is amazing, and it's it's kind of a brick wall for a lot of decks. And then finally, we have Mystic Confluence. This is our top end. Um, just an amazing card. If you don't know what it does, it's a 5-drop, 3 of any, 2 blue. You can choose 3, and you can choose the mode more than once. You can counter a spell unless it's control plays 3. You can turn a creature to its owner's hand, or you can draw a card. So you can, you know, you can draw 3 cards if you wanted. You can counter a spell, draw 2. Counter a spell even harder, and then draw 1. You know, this card's amazing. All right, next up we have our removal. Once again, after the nuts and bolts, and I consider removal nuts and bolts, we're gonna start getting to our spicy stuff. So let's get through the removal real quick. Uh, this is Fatal Push, really efficient removal spell, really good. If your playgroup is playing really lean legacy style decks with a lot of low cost cards, um, this destroys any creature with converted mana cost two or less. And if the revolt cost, or if revolt is activated, it's four or less. Um, just for one, just really, really good, really efficient. Next up, I have this Terror that I've had since I was like eight years old. Um, just destroys target creature without the possibility of regeneration. Basically, it destroys um, artifact and non-black creatures and they can't be regenerated. Um, just, you know, really good. And it's the OG Doomblade. Well, you know, Doomblade is, and Terror are the OG removal spells. Terror is more old school, but Doomblade is a good one. This is just destroy target non-black creature. So it can hit artifact creatures where, you know, uh, Terra can't, but Terra makes it so they can't regenerate. Just both fantastic, fantastic efficient spells. And then, of course, I run a board sweeper, Damnation. This deck is pretty light on board sweepers, honestly, but, you know, with all of our card draw, with Demonic Tutor, 
and with some of the other stuff we can we have that I'll show you in a little bit. Um, it's not that big of a deal, and we are playing, you know, Oathbreak is a multiplayer format, so a lot of the times we can actually rely on other players to do this for us. Alright, now it's time for the spice. These are our mill dedicated cards, not including our combo cards. Grindstone is an amazing card. I love this card ever since I was a kid. Just, just a classic mill card. For one mana, it's an artifact. You can pay three and tap it. And uh, you force a player to put the top two cards of their library into the graveyard. If both cards share at least one color, you repeat this process. So you can get really lucky and just hit like tons and tons of cards from their deck. You know, there's a combo with a Painter Servant, which I believe is banned, but Grindstone by itself is just, just a really good efficient card. One drop, like I said. Just, just really good. Next is Drowned Secrets, a new card. This is a two drop enchantment for one of any and a blue. And it says whenever you cast a blue spell, and we're running a lot of blue spells as you saw, target player puts the top two cards of their library in their graveyard. Just a pretty good um, recurring mill card. It only hits a single player, kind of like, you know, kind of like the grindstone, but I still think it's pretty good. This card is actually on the chopping block for Sphinx's Tutelage, which I don't own a copy of, and it's not in this deck. Um, I could have swore I had a copy of Sphinx's Tutelage when I made this deck, but apparently I don't. So I'm going to be getting one of those, and I'll probably be replacing Drowned Secrets with Sphinx's Tutelage. Next up is Psychic Corrosion, another good card. Another new card, too. Uh, whenever you draw a card, target opponent puts the top two cards of their library in their graveyard. This card is actually really, really good with all the draw that we have. You know, imagine doing a Brainstorm and every opponent milling six. Just because you brainstormed or doing a windfall and every opponent milling like 14, in addition to drawing the seven cards, if it's a draw seven, you know, just amazing. Just This card is fantastic. Next up is Memory Erosion. And other than having art that looks like Nicolas Cage, this is a pretty solid card. It's a three drop enchantment. Uh, it says whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player puts the top two cards of his or her library in the graveyard, which is pretty sweet. The more stuff your opponent casts, the more they get milled. Next up, we have Fraying Sanity. This is really, really good on only one person. That's because it is an enchant player. It's a curse. It's a three drop for two of any and a blue, and it says at the beginning of each end step, so that's each end step, enchanted player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of cards put into that graveyard from anywhere this turn. So this basically doubles all of your mill to a single player. You know, put this on the kill target, put this on the person who's the biggest threat, assuming, you know, you're not the biggest threat, and, uh, you know, just go to town. This card is sweet. And then finally, we have Dread Summons. This one is one that I didn't even think about, but I was looking through all of my rares. I have, I have a couple giant rare binders, and I was like, what the hell? This is like a commander card. And I was like, you know, it actually mills, and it actually gives you some dudes. So this is a sorcery for two black and X. It says each player puts the top X cards of his or her library into their graveyard. For each creature put into the graveyard this way, you get a 2-2 black zombie tapped. So it's not really good for blocking. You don't get like a big army and then able to block. But if uh, you get ignored or the, the board is not super threatening, you can do this. Get a whole bunch of zombies. You can win through mill. You can win through alternate. You know, just having a bunch of tutus. This card's really sweet. Next up, we have a couple of cards that are just, just good. Phantasmal Image is a really good clone. It only costs two mana to play. Comes into play as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. And then if it gets targeted, you have to sacrifice it, which is pretty bad. If your opponents are playing with a lot of Planeswalkers with like ping abilities or target abilities, this card's not so good, but a lot of people aren't, honestly. So Phantasmal Image is just a really fantastic, cheap, efficient um, clone. Uh, if you don't have this or if you don't want to run this one in particular, Clever Impersonator is a good alternative, um, but I really like the Phantasmal Image. Next up, we have a card that doubles as like a finisher and kind of like a pseudo board wipe with Thing in the Ice. It is a 0-4 defender for 2, comes into play with 4 ice counters on it. When you cast an instant or sorcery spell, and as you saw, we are running a lot of instants and sorcery spells, you remove an ice counter. Um, if there are no ice counters, you transform it, and then it transforms into the Awoken Horror, which is a 7-8. And when it transforms, uh, you return all non-horror creatures to their owner's hand. So it's kind of like a big, big old board wipe bouncy spell when um, this sort of Cthulhu dude breaks out through his uh, ice cube. And then we also run the Scarab God. This guy is just an alternate win con. He's just a house. He's a 5-5 five, five, for 5. You might already know what he does because he saw a lot of play in Standard um, a year or so ago. He says, at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life and you scry X where X is the number of zombies you control. You can pay 2 of any, a black and a blue. And it says, exile a creature card from a graveyard and we're going to be milling, so there's going to be a lot of creatures in the graveyards. 
Um, create a token that's a copy of it, except, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. And then when it dies, uh, you get to put it in your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Just a really good, efficient uh, finisher for the deck if we, if, you know, if the mill plan's not working. Um, we can just make an army of 4-4s. Four this is how we go to the long game if we need to. And then finally, for the main deck, we have our combos. You probably already guessed it. We are running Lab Man, Laboratory Maniac, and Thought Lash. This is an instant win combo if we get these both on the field. Well, it's not really instant win. We'll still need to draw a card, but with our deck, that's pretty easy. Laboratory Maniac says if you draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. And Thought Lash says, it's a pretty complicated card because it has some weird old abilities, um, it is a 4-drop enchantment for 2 of any and 2 blue. It says, Cumulative Upkeep, remove the top card of your library from the game. If you do not, remove your library from the game and bury Thought Lash. And you can pay 0 or remove the top card of your library from the game to prevent 1 damage to you. So it's not completely useless outside of this combo. And what Cumulative Upkeep means is you do the thing, and then you do the thing twice, and then you do the thing 3 times, and then you do the thing 4 times every single upkeep. Um, what we do with this is we just remove our entire library from the game so we can just win with Lab Maniac. And by itself, it's not great, but we could still play it when we're in a bind and prevent a lot of damage from us. Still a really, really solid combo and with cards that are, you know, you know, Lab Maniac is not great by himself, but Thought Lash is okay. And then the other combo we run is Mind Crank and the Dusk Mantle Guild Mage. These two cards are actually pretty good by themselves. Um, what Mind Crank does, it's an artifact for two of any and it says, Whenever an opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards from the top of their library into their graveyard. So this basically makes it so our opponents doing damage to each other makes them mill, like makes each other mill each other, which is great. Uh, and then the Dusk Mantle Guild Mage says he's a two-two for uh, a blue and a black. He's a human wizard. He has a uh, three cost ability for one of any a blue and a black. And this is the one that we really want. It says, whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, that player loses one life. So you can probably guess where this is going here. This says whenever an opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards in the graveyard. So you create an infinite combo. Whenever an opponent loses life or they get milled, their whole library just goes into the graveyard. They just die. They just die on the spot. They lose a ton of life and their library just vanishes. The Dusk Mantle Guild Mage does have a second ability, which is, you know, it's okay. Um, for two of any, a blue and a black, it says target player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So we can do that if we, um, if we need to or if we don't have Mind Crank. But yeah, these are the two infinite combos we are running. I think the new Jace from War of the Spark um, will be a really good addition to this. Maybe a replacement for Lab Maniac because the Jace also lets us win with no cards, but also can draw cards with his own abilities. So we don't need another card to let us draw a card. And then finally, we have our lands. A lot of these are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Forge of Heroes is a staple for Oathbreaker, in my opinion. Just lets your Oathbreaker come into play with an additional loyalty counter, which is excellent. Command Tower is pretty obvious. This is Polluted Delta, obviously. It is the on-color fetch. We have Watery Grave, our on-color shock land. We have the Morphic Pool. This is the on-color uh, Battle Bond land. Fantastic card. We have Drowned Catacomb. I mean, we're running basically all of the really good on-color uh, dual lands. So Drowned Catacomb, River of Tears, Fetid Pools, which I actually really like because it has cycling. We can search it up with our fetch land here when we don't need a land to come into play untapped, so we don't have to, you know, waste the untap ability with another, with a different land. Uh, Creeping Tar Pit, just a really good one that also lets us beat them, beat them in if we really need to. Uh, Demir Aqueduct, um, just a, you know, just a pretty good one. It's one of the, uh, the the bounce guild lands. And then finally, we got eight islands here. As you can see, I have foiled them out. And then three uh, swamps. And there you have it, guys. That is my Ashiok Nightmare Weaver Glimpse the Unthinkable Oathbreaker deck. This is actually one of my favorite decks that I have right now. It's a ton of fun. In fact, I have four Oathbreaker decks all built up and ready to play. Um, they're all a blast. You guys, if you have not tried this format out, you should definitely try it out. It is a ton of fun. There are a couple upgrades to this deck I want to make when War of the Spark comes out. I want to get the new Jace. I want to get the new Ashiok. And there's a couple other cards, not in War of the Spark, that I also want to get. Like I said, Sphinx's Tutelage would be a good include into this deck, as well as something like Mind Grind. And as a little teaser for what's to come, here are the other two Oathbreaker decks that I currently have and run with Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, and likely the next video, Garrick Relentless. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you like the video, leave a like, comment, 
subscribe. It all means so much to me, guys. The channel is slowly growing, but I can still need all the help that I can get. Stay tuned for more Oathbreaker content. I also have some Commander stuff planned with my top 10 cards of War of the Spark for Commander and maybe, maybe for Oathbreaker as well. In any case, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you later.